large majority of Labour members have made it clear that their support for Jeremy Corbyn's new politics is continuing leadership of the Labour Party and more democratic equal Britain is what they want. Um, we've also seen the new shadow cabinet taking the fight to the Tories on a range of issues from heightened crisis in the NHS to the vote yesterday to uncap tuition fees which to me I work at a university so that's uh, something that I think is personally brilliant. Um, but if you want to step up the campaign we need to do so much more. Uh, we need to keep winning the argument in our movement for our leadership and winning the argument amongst the public for progressive and a credible alternative to the Tories' failing and divisive austerity policies. Hello everyone. I'm delighted again to welcome Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labour Party, to our city. I think the fact that there's still 500 people standing outside listening to Jeremy talk. is indicative of the kind of movement we're building across this country. Yesterday, 6,000 people turned out on the streets of Liverpool. Mm -hmm. fantastic welcome and uh, thank you to all those who braved the elements to be outside and listen to an overflow rally which we've just concluded outside in Regency Square. I'm really sorry about that. The problem is the halls are just not big enough. <laughs> A special very big thank you to the Fire Brigades Union because they not only support us in so many ways and so many occasions, the fire tender that they're using as the mobile platform was in Liverpool last night and they drove it here today to be places all around the country helping good causes and obviously working for the benefit of their union. Think about this, they're an emergency service we'll rely on 
They're an emergency service that's constantly being told the way forward is to cut jobs and close fire stations and we'll all be safer. I don't get that logic. I'm not sure anybody else does either. So thank you, the Fire Brigade Union. join me in doing this to say a huge thank you to all the volunteers that have helped to put tonight's event together and all the campaigning work that we're doing. And all the support that's been given. Don't be afraid to talk about your politics. there was a very good RMT banner there concerning the issues of Southern Rail and the railway system in this country. There's something that sort of epitomises everything that's wrong about this country. When we as a community have invested in the railway system ever since public ownership in 1948. We electrified the system, yes, it was underfunded in many ways, but there were very important developments that took place. Sadly, Beeching and others closed far too many lines, and we're now on a programme of hopefully reopening more and more of those lines. The Tories privatised, privatised our rail system in the early 1990s, sold it off, diced it up, and handed over train operating companies, um, rolling stock, and of course the whole network itself to the private sector. Rail track ran it so badly, it was taken back into the public sector through network rail. It was an enormous mistake at the same time not to take the train operating companies back into public ownership as well. And if ever there was a case for the public ownership of the rail system, it's got to be the performance of Southern and the service it operates and the way in which the company has sought to blame the unions and the workers who run the system for their closures, their cancellations, their short staffing and all the other issues that go with it. If one rail minister can resign over the running of Southern, I think it's time for the Secretary of State to either intervene or take the issue, take the whole company back into public ownership so it can be publicly run for the benefit of everybody along that line. And there's no issue, there's no issue where it's more obvious of the need for a proper public involvement and investment than in the housing crisis that faces so many in our society. Look at it all across the piece. We have a rise in the number of people who are desperate, who are homeless, who are sleeping on the streets or begging to receive enough money in order to get into a night shelter. We have more people than ever before using food banks within our society. We have more people living in insecure private rented accommodation, some of it in a very bad condition. We have council housing that is denigrated by our government and denigrated by much of the media who don't seem to realise that it was the vision of previous governments that were prepared to invest in secure lifetime tenancies in council housing that gave people the security of accommodation and gave children the security to grow up knowing they weren't about to lose their home. Think of what it must be like for a child changing school so often, moving sometimes from town to town because their parents don't quite qualify for that prize of a council tenancy with a secure lifetime attachment to it. They can't afford one private rented sector flat after another because the benefit cap is overtaken by the level of rent. The damage that does to those children and those families in their lives doesn't go away. Surely we can and must do things better and differently. Investing, investing in good quality housing rather than telling councils to sell it off. 
investing in lifetime tenancies rather than taking them away. Investing in good quality housing has an awful lot of benefits. It obviously helps those in housing need, obviously. It helps children to lead better lives, obviously. It also actually helps the economy. You've got more people working on building and maintaining those properties. You've got a whole job creation all down the supply chain. I want a Labour government that makes the housing crisis a priority to be dealt with. Some of us will have loving partners, loving family, loving community, who would recognise we're going through a difficult time and we're in a difficult place and reach out for us and help us. Others will not. Too many young people in school, in college, in university are often afraid of the stigma of talking about any crisis that they're going through. Sadly, some of those end up taking their own lives because a combination of lack of services, lack of resources, lack of respect and a deep stigma within our society. We can do two things. One we can do ourselves, the other we can demand of public services. The first one is that we don't use language of abuse of those people that are going through a mental health crisis. We recognise we have to reach out to everybody to help them get through it. And that we insist our mental health services are properly funded. Talking therapy is properly funded. Long stay places where they're necessary are properly funded and the very important role played by much of the very good elements of the voluntary sector in trying to support people going through this crisis are properly supported and funded. A society that reaches out for all is a more content society, is a better society and recognises all of us can have problems, but all of us can also get through those problems and continue making the contribution we want to make to our world. Those banks that we bailed out so generously, all of us, we're very generous people, bailed them out eight years ago that, hang on, you've got a responsibility as well. So when Lloyds Bank celebrates a profit of 2.5 billion by sacking hundreds of workers and closing ton dozens and dozens of branches, I say to them, think again. It was us who bailed you out. You owe responsibility to your workforce and to the wider community. We have the National Health Service to be proud of. We have the principles of the welfare state to be proud of. We have the Human Rights Act. We have the Equalities Act. We have an awful lot of things that we've achieved. If we work together on a determination of the kind of country we can create and the kind of contribution we can make to the rest of the world, we're all together, we're all stronger, we're all achieving things. We don't have to live in a divided country. We don't have to live in fear of racism and division. We don't have to live in a society where so many children are left behind, where we walk by on the other side to those that have been dropped out of society altogether. We're stronger, we're better when we do things together. I'm very proud of the size of the Labour Party membership. I'm very proud of the work that's done by so many people within the Labour Party. And in this election, we're, camp and we're campaigning on all these principles and on all these issues. But we're also campaigning as how we're going to fight election campaigns in the future to raise the hopes and sights of everyone in our society of how different and how much better it can be so we don't have the arid nastiness of a market-run economy by a Tory party that only knows division and misery. Unite